right, so we 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 good to All go, right. Kaplan. I have begun recording. All right, um, I will. And also start. I'm gonna share. Yep, there. It is. Okay. Hello, everyone on YouTube. My name is Josh. You know me from the other. Oh, sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. You know me from the Game Dev Club. You know me from this YouTube channel. Uh, and apparently now I will be known as the guy who said nipples the echidna. Or, no, nipples the enchilada. Um, anyways, uh, welcome to the Game Development Club. Uh, today is April the 9th. Um, we, we're going to have Christian Oka's talk from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., but unfortunately we have to reschedule to tomorrow. So we will uh, see him there. Uh, today we have Matt Tomaszewski, who works at Roblox. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about Roblox as a platform, and I am really excited. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to him. Um, I'm going to mute my mic on my end, uh, and yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you, Josh. So again, hello, everyone. As everyone uh, can see on their screen, make sure to click into the stream if you haven't. Uh, I am Matt Tomaszewski, and today we're going to be kind of going over the idea of Roblox as a platform, uh, what it is, what it entails, what does it do better than competitors, what does it do worse than competitors. And let me start off with this very first question. Is it a viable platform? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. So I want to have a quick disclaimer here in that I am probably extremely biased because I have been on Roblox as a user since 2009. And I've been developing on the platform for nearly a decade now. And I have been working for Roblox as a full-time employee since 2020. Uh, small, smaller disclaimer that all information that I'm presenting can be found publicly. So of course there's nothing private here, but I just want to say that everything that I'm going to be saying today, keep in mind that I am biased that I've been on Roblox for almost two decades now. I really like the platform. So make sure you factor that in when I am kind of giving my stance on this. But that said, I tried to do it as objectively as possible, but I will yield. There's definitely going to be still likely some bias within. So again, I, I am a uh, associate product manager at Roblox. So some habits are very, very hard to drop. So as all product managers do, quick little roadmap of what we're gonna be going over. Uh, it's gonna be roughly about 35 minutes of your time, which I am grateful to have. So we're gonna be going over the idea of, well, what even is Roblox? What does Roblox offer developers? my personal experience with Roblox, my experience with other platforms, and then kind of from that Roblox versus other platforms, and then a Q&A. And if time permits, I plan to give a short Roblox Studio demo. Uh, and this demo, again, it's not going to be really a tutorial, but more so just a quick showcase of all the features that Roblox Studio supports. So without further ado, we'll head on into kind of the idea of what Roblox is. So again, what really is Roblox? And uh, it's, 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 for lack of a better word, it is a gaming platform. It is not a game itself. And I want to make that very, very clear because Roblox is two things. It's an app to make games and it's a tool, uh, to, to make games. So you can play games, you can make games and it's got all these four forms of content and pretty much what sort of content does Roblox have? It's got a lot. It's got games, it's got experiences and these things can be things from video games that are similar to Payday 2, uh, to role-play games, to post-apocalyptic survival games, to experiences such as concerts, like a Little Nas X concert. Um, it can be things that are that are called live ops, which is effectively, it's kind of like a dynamic game world that can kind of change on the fly and borderline real time. Additionally, there's things such as avatar items, and I can't speak on behalf of these avatar items uh, but I've heard that avatar item makers make mad bank. So again, it's not just games. It's things such as games, experiences, avatar items. Within these experiences and games, there's economies, there's trading. Even on the developer side, there is this economy of selling these plugins, these assets, there's commissions. So it's so many things. And I think the best thing to equate it to is Roblox is if Steam and Unity pretty much had a baby. It's all those things wrapped together. So it's a game, it's a, it's, it's a game library, it's a game platform, as well as it's a tool to make games with and a tool to play games on. So the next kind of question I thought made sense to answer is, well, how do people see Roblox? Do people see Roblox the same way that I see it? And to me, there were two key perspectives of what Roblox is. And to me, it was two sides of the same coin. 
And there's the user perspective and the developer perspective. And what it really boils down to is the idea of it being convenient, it's free, and that's pretty much what this boils down to. Again, it supports various platforms, uh, it supports uh, game visibility and marketing. For the most part, it's generally free. Uh, and it's pretty much what users make of it is, is what Roblox is. So it's very, very open-ended. The next question, is, is Roblox a platform for kids? And the short answer to that is no, and the long answer is that it's complicated. Because currently Roblox's largest demographic is uh, the younger crowd, but they're in the process of kind of aging up the platform. They want to bring in older users, people about our age. So again, roughly the, the, the age of probably like I would say 17 to 25, they're heavily trying to kind of bring those users in. And they hope to increase the, the this amount of young adults. And to do so, they've got a few things in their tool belt. They want to relax moderation. They want to enable vo voice chat. They want to have a more realistic opportunity and options uh, for just the platform overall. So for instance, uh, backwards compatibility is big for Roblox. They're obviously going to keep supporting their little blocky guys you can see down there on the right. But a big thing that they want to do is allow for all different types of media. So again, realistic cartoony, they want to allow for it all. And I suspect that Roblox in aging up, they're going to allow a lot of things. They're going to be relaxed with a lot of things. And I expect they will allow things such as like horror, swearing, even like drug references. They're going to allow a lot of older, mature game concepts onto the platform. And I would wager that Roblox would allow up to like a soft M rating. So We've kind of gone over what Roblox offers users. So what do they offer developers? And this is going to be, this is going to be a lot. So bear with me here. So they offer kind of development tools and documentation. So there's the tool you actually use to make games on Roblox called Roblox Studio. And Roblox Studio has built-in support for all platforms and you don't even need to actually build it. Like it's all cloud-based. So compared to Unity, you don't have to waste time building it. You just publish your game and it's out there on the internet for anyone to play on any platform that you allow it to. Uh, additionally, there's a maintained wiki and documentation. So there's definitely a lot to bite off here. There's a lot to chew here. So if you're very confused or if you're, if you're lost and you want to know what to do, there's a maintained wiki and documentation that are regularly updated. As well as there's also an official developer support forum that has various discussions and you can get help. And if you uh, stick with Roblox long enough and if you kind of make your name out there, there's even a official developer meetup every year out in California. So uh, if you're lucky enough to be kind of noticed by, uh, by Roblox, to be noticed whether through your metrics or through your quality of work, you'll actually be invited to an official like developer meetup where you'll be able to meet with other like-minded developers and kind of again, foster this community. So I mentioned kind of the tools and the documentation that Roblox offers. And some of the things that it offers right off the bat is actually game servers and hosting. You actually have to do nothing. There's no hassle with servers. You don't have to deal with ports or anything like that. You're able to connect clients instantly. You literally have to do no work for it. And you get them for free. And by default, your game is actually already set up to support multiplayer. And if you want it to be a single player game, all you would have to do is change a single setting on the website. You don't even need to do it in Roblox Studio to set it to single player. It's very straightforward. It's very plug and play. Uh, additionally, Roblox, what I think a big strength of Roblox is, 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 is game visibility. So I'll go into it in, in detail in the future, but Roblox compared to other platforms, has a very, very good game visibility algorithm. And it naturally brings kind of these new experiences that are of decent quality to the user base. So for instance, if you want to get discovered, Roblox is a great place for that. Additionally, I kind of mentioned the idea of if you're successful. And if you're successful, uh, you will earn Robux from users buying things in your game or from users playing your game. And if you're successful enough, you can actually cash out this Robux for real life currency. So it is sustainable. And I want to preface it with this: that so that everything I've listed here is a hundred percent free. But this isn't this isn't this isn't advertising. I'm not advertising to you. There are tons and tons of caveats that we are about to get into, as well as a bunch of things to consider. So these things all sound good, and these are all the pros of what Roblox offers developers. But I want to be clear here in that this is not marketing. This is just, in my opinion, what I think Roblox offers developers that I think are really really cool. So I mentioned the idea of money. I mentioned the idea of profit. And so how do you earn 
money on Roblox. So again, I mentioned the currency on Roblox is called Robux. And Robux can be exchanged into real life money. And you can get Robux through a multitude of ways through your in-game experiences. So you can sell content in your game. You can sell access to play your game. So you can actually make your game cost money to play. But the majority of developers don't actually do that because it does hinder you uh, in terms of having people try your game. Additionally, you can get commissions from selling content that other people have made in your game, as well as you can actually get money without actually selling a single thing if you have users that have a membership play your game. And so again, so if you don't monetize anything in your game whatsoever, you will actually still receive money from commissions from within your game, as well as from having these users with premium play your game. Uh, and to preface it, this premium membership on Roblox, all it does is actually give the user currency. So it's effectively, again, it doesn't give them any actual advantage other than they get currency. So it's it's, it's a very uh, it's a very fair model to the player as well as to the developer. And in the past, it used to definitely be a lot uh, more unfair to the user and a lot more unfair to the developer. Whereas right now, it's in a very very good place. So everything I've said up until this point has been generally positive, and I'm going to kind of wrap up this idea of positivity with my personal positive experience before going into the negatives. So again, I want to preface this with this is this whole presentation, as well as this slide in particular, is from the perspective of a user on Roblox, as well as a developer on Roblox, not as an employee of Roblox. So I, I, want, to, I want to make sure that that's very clear that this is my personal opinion, and this has no way... This in no way is shaped by my, 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 by my employment. So I'm showing you these metrics, this industry knowledge, and kind of this miscellaneous things that I've, I, I, I've kind of learned. And from these metrics, the, the general synopsis of those metrics is I've, I've worked alone uh, as a developer on Roblox, and, and I've done it as a hobby. I haven't done it as a career. I haven't done it in a way to actually kind of make it sustainable. I just did it because I enjoyed it. And I got all of these metrics from pretty much doing it as a hobby. I Again, I didn't set off to make it a business. And I did fairly well for just doing it as a hobby. So I kind of want to bring forth that idea of, well, what do you think would happen if you did it as a hobby? Or what do you think would happen if you got a team and you went full into this? And again, there's both pros and cons. You can succeed very, very well. Uh, at the same time, you can definitely be putting in a lot of resources in and you may not get what you're getting. You may not be getting the same amount out. But again, from my experience, it has been generally positive. What I've put in, I get back out. And that's my experience. Additionally, I learned a lot of industry knowledge uh, while working on games uh, with Roblox. And I learned a lot about object-oriented programming. I learned a lot about public relations. I learned a lot about marketing. And for context, I didn't say too much about myself before this. I actually graduated uh, UConn in 2020. And I was a digital media and design major with a concentration in game design. And so Roblox to me offered a very, very good amount of supplemental knowledge that DMD didn't quite cover. So for instance, if you're in DMD and you're not, or, or you aren't learning any business or CS skills, I think Roblox is perfect for kind of helping polish your ability to learn how to code, do object oriented programming, uh, to do public relations, marketing. It helps with all these things that you may not necessarily get experience with uh, in the DMD program uh, at UConn. Additionally, uh, I kind of uh, learned a lot about various different tools and tooling. I learned a lot about localization with Roblox. And uh, Roblox has a very, very good localization portal. And my games have been localized practically worldwide. And I, I, as a result, my games have a large Portuguese, Spanish, and Korean community, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and it's kind of, again, taught me a lot about kind of setting up your, your content so it's sustainable, so it's easily, uh, it's, it's easily able to be translated. And I always thought that was a very cool thing about Roblox. It kind of helped expand my global view. Additionally, cashing out. I mentioned a lot about cashing out. And from my games, from my games that, I, again, I still say are, are hobbyists, they're not a part-time job, they're not, they're not a, they're not a full-time job by any means, so they're, they're, they're a hobby. And for my games, I actually have the ability to cash out Robux into USD every month. And to me, this was great for covering things like textbooks and food in college. Like I could order wings like crazy without feeling guilty because I knew that my, my Roblox hobby would completely cover it. 
Uh, additionally, post college, it's been a great source of kind of like a rainy day fund, as well as kind of just a, a great source of expendable income. Because again, I'm able to cash out roughly every month. So uh, having money every month that, again, isn't substantial, but isn't uh, minute is very, very cool to kind of have at my disposal. So I've mentioned a lot, and I mean a lot about the positives. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that are more negative as well as kind of my caveats about working with Roblox. And again, I want to preface this with this is as a user and a developer, not as an employee. So this is, again, these experiences may be the experiences that you will undertake if you decide to try out Roblox as a developer. So for metrics, uh, the very first thing is off the bat, Roblox has the majority of players in these top games, in these top experiences. And that curve is very, very steep. And what that therefore means is that the most amount of money, the most amount of playtime, and the most amount of popularity is going into those top games. So to put it in perspective, Roblox probably has games that have concurrent player counts of anywhere from zero to 700,000. So depending on where you are in the totem pole, you're actually either beating Steam's top 10 games or you are pretty much uh, a spec. You're non-existent. But I do want to say that even with that big curve, Roblox's algorithm does value quality. So if you're willing to make quality, you will get noticed in some aspect. Uh, in terms of industry knowledge, so Roblox, Roblox's coding language is Lua, and that is not an industry la standard language. It's not C, it's not C++, it's not C Sharp, so it's Lua. It's, it's not industry standard. And additionally, Roblox Studio is very, very different from tools like Unity and Unreal. It's not like a proprietary tool, but it's also not like kind of these these frequently used uh, non-proprietary tools. And what I mean with this industry knowledge is I kind of suggest the idea of learn Roblox and use Roblox alongside these other engines. And I want to stress that if you are in DMD and you want to enter game design, I recommend that you take CS courses because DMD does not prep you for engineering positions. And Roblox and Unity and Unreal, they're all a very, very good supplement, but they should not be all that you're using because you need formal experience via classes in order to enter the industry as an engineer for the most part. So that's something I kind of want to call out here with Roblox or really with all game engines and tinkering in your spare time. If you want to be an engineer, you likely do need to have some form of formal CS teaching, no matter how successful you are on Roblox or Unity or whatever. Lastly, uh, Roblox has a developer relations team and they talk between the developers and the community and they kind of, again, they, they, they are, they are the, the PR people uh, between the company and uh, developers and the users. And my biggest pain with them is they often did not convey as much information as I wish they would. So for instance, if you apply to certain platform-wide initiatives, they often don't tell you when you get denied, which to me was always a very big pet peeve because it would literally be as simple as, Hey, sorry, uh, you applied to this initiative. Uh, all the all the slots are full. You didn't make the cut. Like to me, that would have been fine. But they more often than not don't tell you that you that they they they, they don't tell you if you were uh, denied. Which to me was always kind of a pain because it was just one extra step they had to do to kind of just make it clear that hey, this door is closed for now. Come back later, type of thing. So again, I think their transparency with the public is definitely something that I I, I would I would personally want to see improvement with as a developer in the community. So conversely, I've also worked with other game platforms. I've worked with Unity. Uh, I've worked a handful with Unreal. And if it counts, I've also worked a handful with Valve's Hammer Editor. <laughs> um, so with Unity, I made, I would say, a handful of titles and a handful of things that actually went somewhere. And then most other things were really just tinkering. So I worked on a title called Gatlin, which was actually a big project I did while at UConn. It started off as an intro to game design project. I kind of polished it through uh, to my senior year and I ended up publishing it on Steam. I also created uh, kind of these prototypes. The one on the top right, it's called Hellfighter. It never really went anywhere, but it was pretty much a uh, the brainchild of what I wanted to do with procedural generation. So you're actually in a level there that's completely procedurally generated. Uh, the last one was a, pr a project I worked on for student agency called Looking Up. I worked on it with a handful of other students at UConn. Uh, Unity, and it was for uh, student agency. It was for our Yukon Health and Wellness. And again, they didn't really do anything with that, sadly, but uh, I've worked on Unity a bit. And I would say compared to Roblox, Unity is definitely a lot better at making 2D games. You can kind of see here, these 
things are very stylistic. They're very cartoony. They're very 2D. They're very flat. They're very pastel. Uh, and Unity is much better at making 2D games in that aspect, as well as Unity is a lot better at making standalone games because Roblox actually requires you to use Roblox.com. You're not able to publish it anywhere else. You have to publish it on Roblox. Additionally, I would say Unity teaches you a lot more traditional practices. It teaches you about things like shaders. It actually has code inheritance. Lua does not actually support that. Uh, it teaches you about optimization as well as it teaches you about GitHub. All those things really don't pertain to Roblox at this time. Shaders could definitely come to Roblox in the future as well as code inheritance. But the idea of kind of GitHub, the idea of kind of shader optimization doesn't really matter to Roblox. Additionally, what Unity kind of offers, or more so Steam, I would say, is the idea of mature game content. Because currently at this time, Roblox allows ratings to roughly E10 to teen. Uh, and they're hoping to kind of get to that soft M rating soon. Whereas you can see from the top right, uh, that game is kind of weird. And that game probably would not have been allowed on Roblox back in the day. Whereas in the future, it likely would be. And I would say compared to Roblox, Unity is probably worse at stability between builds because Roblox is huge on backwards compatibility. Like if you've made a game on Roblox in 2008, there's actually a fairly good chance it still works today. Uh, so whenever Roblox releases an update, more often than not, your game is fine. Like 99.999% of the time, your game will still work. And the off chance it won't work, they'll either revert the update or they will warn users that a big change is coming and to prep your game for it. So Roblox is huge on backwards compatibility, whereas with Unity, that is probably, it's unlikely that Unity would ever reach out to you about that. Additionally, Roblox is really, really good at building for specific devices as well as for control mapping. So like mapping controls. Unity, you have to either use third-party plugins or you kind of have to finagle with some of the tools they have there. And it's not exactly easy or clear to kind of build things for specific devices as well as map things. Whereas with Roblox, all you have to do to build for a single device is just check a checkbox and then boom, that game is available on the Xbox. Uh, additionally, for controls, all you have to do is a single line of code and you can map the same button on PC to mobile to Xbox in literally a single line of code. And it's fantastic. And I honestly really hope that other companies would do that because it's so, so much nicer. Additionally, Roblox was a lot better for making uh, games and prototypes quickly. So even something as kind of silly as, as, as Hellfighter on the top right, that actually took me a reasonable amount of time. Whereas if I wanted to make that on Roblox, that would have taken me all of about a day. Whereas because I was doing it with Unity, it took me more of about a week. Um, Roblox is very, very good at kind of prototyping. I made a lot of projects my senior year uh, for, for UConn in Roblox just because of the sheer the sheer power of the engine. It was just so much easier to make things on Roblox. Additionally, Unity is not that great at real-time developer collaboration. Roblox is fantastic at that, as well as Unity doesn't actually offer servers in multiplayer, or at least when I was still using it, it didn't. Uh, and Roblox supports that built in and is extremely plug and play, extremely easy to do so. So uh, publishing, I, I kind of mentioned the idea of publishing. And so I'm going to compare two places I published to Roblox. So I'll make it quick and brief because, again, I don't think it makes sense to go into extreme detail about this. Steam, if you want to update a game, if you want to upload a game, it costs you $100 to kind of make that deposit to put your game on there. And personally, I always thought the, the Steam algorithm was very, very fickle. You have Steam sales that'll help your game get discovered, but whatever seems to be trending on Steam almost always seems to either be like a sexual game or a triple A game. And you really don't see any small indie games or any small passion projects trending unless they go insanely viral. And from Steam, I kind of learned the idea of if you want to make it on Steam, your external marketing has to be very, very powerful and your game quality actually doesn't matter as much. And my general take was it wasn't good for hobbyists and it wasn't good for small teams. Interestingly, I decided to take a step backwards and I published a game to Newgrounds in 2021, which, you know, kind of reverse interneting there, but it cost nothing to upload it. There was no built-in marketing strategy, so there's no way to publish it. But with Newgrounds, quality did matter. So if your game had quality, it would get discovered. But the thing about it is success on Newgrounds did not last long unless you went viral and you can't easily make money on it. So to me, the two places I published that were not Roblox didn't go too well. 
But I do want to say that I have uploaded two games to Steam and one game to Newgrounds, so your mileage may vary. Again, it may be a, a case of lightning needing to strike, but again, for me, putting that deposit on Steam, I've put $200 into Steam, I've barely broken even, and I've put nothing into Newgrounds, and I got some attention out of Newgrounds. So that was my experience with publishing on these platforms. So kind of to conclude, what, 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 how does Roblox fare against these other platforms? So again, you guys know how to read, so you can kind of read these slides, but the general synopsis is that if you're not a triple A studio, I do think Roblox is the best option for you if you want to get your name out there and if you want to build an impressive resume, because Roblox will give you, will give you uh, noticeable and really, really uh, noteworthy metrics. It'll give you money and it'll give you product management skills. It'll give you a lot of things. Uh, conversely though, if you want to learn the industry, the games design industry as a software engineer, I think you should actually learn unity because unity is more the status quo. So Roblox is again, more of a product manager perspective as well as a, a, a resume booster. Whereas unity is likely more of a supplement to learning how to become a software engineer. Uh, when it comes to publishers, steam to me seemed to be kind of like a crap shoot. It, the main thing that was discouraging about Steam isn't that your game doesn't get discovered, but more so that you have to pay $100 to learn that your game will not get discovered type of thing. So to me, it kind of required a combination of marketing and luck. And lastly, Newgrounds, I kind of did it just for laughs. I, I thought it was fun to do, uh, but it definitely wasn't viable. Unless you're going to make the next Friday Night Funkin', you're not going to make money off of Newgrounds, but it's kind of a, a nice hobbyist thing to do if you're just inclined to upload Unity standalone files on Newgrounds. So uh, to conclude, I would say Roblox is the best if you want to build a resume, if you're working solo. Unity is the best if you want to become a software engineer. Steam is really, really, it's a crapshoot, but if you have a good marketing team, you'll hopefully be okay. Or if you're a triple A studio, you'll be fine. And then Newgrounds is kind of, if you want to publish your Unity game somewhere, or Newgrounds is akin to itch.io if you've ever heard of it. So again, it's kind of a, a hobbyist publishing area. And with that, I yield my time. Thank you for listening. And I am open to questions. All right. If you've been to the Game Development Club before, you know that this is the part where everybody unmutes their mics and we all start clapping egregiously loud. So these claps are, there you go. They're mic peaking, thunderous. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, cool. That was really good. That was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, it was very informative, um, and honestly, like I've been thinking about it for a while, and I too would like to make a game on the Roblox platform. I just wish I had more time, but once I do, I probably will because you have. We've talked about this before, but you basically already convinced me that it is a good idea. Um, <laughs> But yeah, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to unmute uh, and ask away. Uh, I actually just wanted to point out, recently there was the uh, release of a new program called Core. Has anyone here heard of that? I have, yes. Yeah, it's, so you would know it's like, it's kind of competition for, <laughs> for Roblox now, because it's basically... It's Roblox, but in Unreal Engine 4, to an extent, I'd say. Yes, the one thing I will say about Core, which I think it'll need time to develop before I can form a solid opinion. Mm -hmm. the, the minimal thing that I know about Core currently is their system of paying developers currently is not very sustainable. There's mm -hmm. not really money going into the system. Most of the money is coming from either... Uh, early access donors, which are not going to be plentiful, as well as from venture venture capitalist investors, which isn't a bad thing, but the platform currently does not make the money back that it is uh, giving to developers. So I'm curious about Core's long view, I would say. Uh, I, I question its sustainability at this time. I, I, okay. I don't discredit it by any means, but to me it's, it, it's, it, it's in its infancy and its current... Uh, monetization flow to me is very suspicious in that i i'm curious to see what their long-term goal is for that okay because again it's if you're if investors are putting money in and you're putting that money out towards your developers to pay them 
that's great. But then what happens once the, the VC stops? Like, how do you make that sustain long view? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well as one thing I will say that Core is doing that's interesting is they're definitely appealing to the older demographic, which is what Roblox is kind of trying to go towards as well. Um, yeah. So I think it'll be interesting. It's always it's always nice to have kind of a, an intellectual uh, competitor that'll kind of make you challenge your ideas and your approach. So uh, I, 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 for lack of a better word, I welcome them to the industry, but I'm definitely curious about their long their their long term plans. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? So Matt, what kind of games have you like made with like Roblox and what type of games do you think are like best for the Roblox platform, I guess? Okay, so that's 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 a very good question. Um so I can show you. I don't know if it'll I don't know if I have it set shared to this screen in particular or my desktop. Let's see. Can you guys see my desktop or no? It's only Chrome. Okay, here let me. Uh, okay, so you guys should hopefully be able to see that. So again, the idea of, of Roblox, what I have made, I often make things that I think are just cool. I don't make them to be um, necessarily uh, profitable. So for the most part, what I've made in the past, I've made mini games. This here, Tethered, this is a mini game. Uh, I've made Running in the 90s, small little passion projects. And I've made this series called The Day the Noobs Took Over Roblox, which essentially was almost like the idea of combining an adventure game, uh, the decisions of like telltale games, as well as obstacle courses. And I've can kind of combined them into one. Uh, so I, I've kind of made these, uh, these branching story games that have like obstacles, boss fights and whatnot. Uh, additionally, these are the projects I worked on uh, while at UConn. These are kind of like little uh, fun party mini games. Um, none of them are what I would say is the industry standard. If you go to the games play page on Roblox, you can kind of see what the industry standard is. Uh, and a lot of what it is, is kind of these role play games is definitely big because users spend a lot of time role playing. They make the game themselves, as well as the idea of kind of these, uh, let me see if I can find it. So for instance, Welcome to Bloxburg. It currently has about 100K people playing it. This game, again, it's a role-play game that has kind of these, these city systems. It has all of these systems that let users themselves make the game. So, so currently the big trends on Roblox are, I would say, role-play, letting users make their own things, as well as this genre called simulators, where it's almost like reenacting something that you would do in real life, but in kind of like a, a, a gamified format. Um, and it especially worked because of COVID, because, for instance, you can't go outside and visit your friends so why not visit like a train station on Roblox? Why not visit like a nuclear power plant in Roblox? You know, uh, why not visit a museum in Roblox? So that went big because of COVID. Um, but role play, role play is big as well as kind of the idea of open world games have always been big on Roblox. There's a lot of things that are very reminiscent to Grand Theft Auto Five on here. I think that covered all parts of your question, but let me know if anything was not uh, clear. That's awesome. Thank you. I was say, pretty much, if you can think of it, you can make it, and anything can have some uh, form of success. But if you really want to make it big, uh, you definitely have to put a lot of time, effort, and resources into your idea. Again, I work alone, so for the most part, my things are kind of hobby projects, and the fact that they got as far as they did to me is very, very humbling. Um, hi. Um, quick question. How similar is the is the um, coding language of, I forget what it was called, of Roblox to C Sharp. Okay, uh, so the coding language is Lua. Um, and so pretty much I would say, I'll describe it the reverse way at first because this is how I've always described it to other people. Uh, C Sharp to me is like a child between Lua and C++. So there are a lot of components of Lua that will be familiar if you know C Sharp, if you know C++, because they are very, very similar. Um, again, there's definitely a lot of things that aren't similar. I'd mentioned that there is no class inheritance with Lua, or at least the way Roblox implements Lua, which kind of sucks. But as a result, you have to reference libraries, which is a re very reminiscent thing to Java and, and, and the Cs, of course. Um, so I would say very, very familiar. It, 
if you know the syntax for one language, you'll effectively know them all. It's just a matter of whether or not you're willing to learn it. And I, I, I think if you know if you know a C language, if you know Java, you can learn Lua pretty easily. Mastering it though, I Thank guess, you. is a, is another thing. Oh, of course, sorry. yeah, no, great question. Uh, I got you. Thank you. I have a question. I'm not going to put you on the spot and make you say what your favorite part of DMD was, but I am kind of curious. Uh, what skills do you think transferred the most to the role that you have now and the way you think about design, uh, having gone into the field and working with Roblox? Okay, so I'll preface it with this. So again, I'm an associate product manager, uh, as well as I am completely okay with being biased to what I did and did not like about DMD. So I will up and front say my favorite part of DMD, Professor Sloda, was your classes, because I do think they prepared me uh, very heavily for the world of product management. Um, a lot of product management is I the idea. I didn't say that, everybody, just to be clear. It's, 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 <laughs> It's not my intent. I didn't. Yeah, Professor Sloter is just—he's just a good professor, so people like to praise him for his courses. We I'm very truth. biased. Yeah, I think, I think we all know that Professor Sloter is just good at teaching. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We know the truth that you wanted to shout yourself out here, so <laughs> yeah. you're gonna give away my scam. <laughs> but you know, uh, Professor Sloter's classes, specifically like the idea of storytelling helped out a lot with the idea of product management because effectively what you have to do for product management is you pretty much, you have to understand the issue, you have to prioritize the issue, you have to triage the issue, and then you kind of have to tell the story about what the issue is, what are the issues with this issue, how should we solve the issue, and then you have to actually make your case uh, to the engineers, the engineering manager involved, your other product managers. Um, so it's... It, it's very tied into the idea of storytelling. It's very tied into the idea of debating. It's tied into the idea of taking this, this long perspective. Like you're not, you don't want to just make a band-aid fix. You want to have it so that your fix paves the groundwork for future solutions. Um, so for example, it, 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 I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this without breaking NDA. <laughs> um, so for instance, let's say that you 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 have a problem that you could easily solve just by slapping a bandaid on. Let's say you have a pipe that's leaking. You can slap a bandaid on it, but all right, well, what's what's the bigger issue? Oh, well, the pipe got the leak because the water pressure is way too intense. So we should lower the water pressure. But why is the water pressure so intense? Well, it's very, very intense because there's a large need for water. So we have to expand our infrastructure to lower the water pressure, to therefore fix the leak. Like there's a lot of different avenues you can take. And the, the thing about product management is you have to kind of go with your gut you have to figure out and balance what's the best priority. And then as a result, you have to make your case for that. So to me, storytelling with the idea of DMD was huge for preparing me for that. Let's say, yeah, student agency, as well as a lot of Professor Sloda's classes prepared me the most for product management. I, I genuinely appreciate that. And actually, one thing I would say, too, is that as you're describing it, it's I think it's even less so the storytelling part is and more so the complex systems part and understanding that if one thing changes, then it affects the rest of the system. And those systems can be nested in a lot of really complex ways. So uh, I am glad that that's sort of been useful as you've gone into the field and, and thought about how you have to sort of communicate these ideas to other people. I say it, 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 it definitely helps. Um, I've, I've, beat it, I've beat it around the bush about it, but one of Roblox's values is taking the long view. Uh, and I would say the idea of thinking of systems, the idea of um, kind of thinking about this story, thinking this narrative, thinking the reasons why you're doing something was definitely something I learned a lot uh, from you. Thank you. Um, I have one other question that's completely unrelated to that. And it's essentially, it, can you comment or do you know anything about the perspective that Roblox takes on moderation. You had mentioned they want to change it so that there's some M-rated stuff potentially or have more lifelike uh, aesthetics. What, what, how are they kind of thinking about themselves? Are they sort of taking this Facebook perspective of we're a platform, not a publisher? And like, do you do you have any insight into kind of how they think about themselves as a, uh, as a platform versus an app versus a social media site? Sure. I will explain it in the best way I can without uh, disclosing anything. So 
Roblox sees themselves currently as a platform. They originally started as a game, as a game publisher, but they're definitely moving to the realm of platform. Um, when it comes to the idea of moderation, they definitely still want to keep users safe, of course. They want to keep they want to keep any kids that are still on the platform and that will continue to come to the platform safe, of course, as well as making kind of a a community for older individuals. Um, so to do so, it's obviously very, very interesting. So there's definitely a lot of ways one could solve that. So for instance, uh, for argument's sake, okay, let's say I am 10 years old. I go to this game page. Well, what if we add a system that makes it so I can't see games that are rated teen, right? Boom. That's instantly one thing you can kind of do to kind of, as a platform, protect, uh, protect your platform as well as protect the developers on the platform. Uh, as well as you'll help them get demographics that they may want. So, for instance, uh, I don't know, uh, this Dust Wasteland Survival. Let's say it's a, it's a, it's a very gritty game, a very mature game uh, like Fallout, right? Well, if you make this game rated T or rated M and you don't let little kids play it, you give them so much creativity, you give them so much freedom, as well as you give them this demographic of older users, as well as you foster this community of older users. Um so for lack of a better word, they are a platform and they're definitely trying various ways to accommodate uh, everyone. So like no matter how old you are, you're, you're, you're like they want to accommodate literally everyone pretty much. That makes sense. Um, I I guess the reason I ask is just because I know Facebook plays and Twitter <clears throat> Twitter does as well. And there are a lot of other social media companies that sort of play footsie with like what they're allowed to do versus what they sort of ethically should do. And I'm. I don't suspect Roblox is in that same category. Um, it does make me wonder a, a little bit about the eventual need for individuals to actually, as people working for Roblox, existing just to moderate um, those spaces. And I don't know to the extent they already have something like that. But so they, um, they yeah, do already I, have I imagine that. teams. Oh, okay, they do already do that. I want to. I, I don't know the exact number, but there's definitely hundreds to maybe even thousands of moderators. Um, so they have moderation. I think a big thing with Roblox is it's so flexible and it's so open that they don't want to take away people's creativity because of bad actors. So instead, they're finding ways to catch bad actors instead of punishing people that, that are using the site properly. Um, so, for instance, there are currently a lot of games that do break the terms of surface terms of service that haven't been found yet. There are a lot of people that try to fish users and steal their accounts type of thing. Um, there's definitely the worry uh, of, of Roblox having too much uh, say over its developers. So a lot of what Roblox is doing is trying to make the platform safe while giving as much reins to the community as possible. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, and then no game is ever going, no online community is ever going to be completely perfect in the sense that, you know, World of Warcraft will always have gold farmers and, you know, you're always going to have people who find a way to exploit the tool that you've created. But it is good to know that they've already been thinking about how, how they can keep these spaces sort of free from conspiratorial disinformation, whatever you don't want to expose little kids to stuff. Yes, they, they literally have, to my bare knowledge, the very least three teams that are dedicated to various issues, issue, or actually four or five now that I think about it, four teams uh, surrounded by that that dilemma um and that's I the thing the, it, it's oh, i was i was just gonna say i think it's very interesting that um right now in venezuela because you mentioned about like gold farming right like the way that a system can be exploited and to an extent which way it grows um you can make more money f uh, farming gold in world of warcraft full-time than you can an actual job <laughs> right now because it, it, it's it's crazy you know what i mean like like the way that online communities kind of dip into the real world and how that can like kind of change the way that we see things so i i do think it's quite interesting that there was already like hundreds or even as you said like even thousands of people who are you know moderating this this platform already but it was a, with roblox there should be no surprise in the fact there is moderation. I would say the thing about Roblox, oddly enough, is you hear cherry-picked examples of things going wrong with Roblox. You don't hear what's going right. Um, so for for instance, right, if you enter a game and a kid is talking with a stranger and it seems really, really awkward, right, you can report them and, and the moderation team will take care of that within the span of about like an hour, let's say. 
But the real question that I have in that circumstance is, would you really le- leave your kid alone in a public space with a bunch of strangers? Probably not. So monitor your kid on the internet is kind of my stance when it comes to more egregious uh, moderation issues. I think it's a lot of parents maybe not fully understanding the internet. I think to whatever extent that makes sense. It's kind of the same, like, it feels like the same vein as you wouldn't download a car, but I guess in this case, it's more substantial. I think I agree True. with you as well, but... This is a... Roblox daily like fends off bot attacks. It fan it, it fends off phishing things. I honestly feel bad for the moderators because the poor stuff they must see in that moderation queue is probably traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Um, so like there's there's the there, without getting too into it, I would not be surprised if Roblox has ways to also add some sort of algorithmic machine learning to help moderators out. Discord does that too now, actually. If It'll, it'll actually, if you, there's a setting that you can actually check in your settings to filter uh, messages that, or like, I guess, image messages that may contain nudity. You can actually do that. And Discord has oh, machine really? learning that just can see messages. And sometimes it'll say like, hey, this is like, this person doesn't want to receive this. Right. Which I, I think is really interesting. And um, that's definitely really interesting like, and useful and, and scary in some ways. Like I, in the sense that like the, to have these tech, these are just really powerful technologies, and it makes me wonder about the human element as well. Because if a lot of these games are designed around role playing, like especially if you happen to be role playing with other people, and there is a voice chat implemented, like there are a lot of different considerations there. Um, that seem like I, I, I'm glad it's not my job to solve them because it's a really, really hard problems. Like, and uh, I, I hope that you know they can they continue to have success in managing these spaces so that. Everybody who's participating feels like they can be comfortable there. I I, I am I very biased. I, I, I'm I, very I, biased in favor of Roblox, but um, I think they're heading in the right direction with that. So, for instance, voice chat, they did announce some of the features for it, and there's been some things mined for it, so it is public knowledge. Um, to my understanding, voice chat is going to be hidden behind a, an age gate that you have to verify your age type of thing. So, for instance, if you're talking on Roblox, you they're, they're going to know kind of like, if you are if you are the right age, as well as if you do anything illegal, they can actually kind of like get you for that type of thing. So um, they're kind of definitely thinking a lot in terms of the realm of trust and safety. They want to make sure that uh, kids are safe on the platform, as well as all users are safe on the platform. That's good. Club Penguin was really big on that too. I mean, it was very very easy to get banned from Club Penguin. Uh, so I'm I'm sure it's possible. Is it, Roblox, they don't want to get people banned for no good reason, but like they definitely want to, of course, uh, tackle the big fish. They want to tackle groomers, uh, scammers, uh, fishers, the like. People that just want to mess with people just because they're sick. Like They want to make sure that all that gets tackled out, and they're doing a fairly good job of it. Yeah, I think there's... I think there's a long way to go, for sure. Like, in terms of even, like, you know, you could talk about how... I, the only reason that I know that Discord has, like, the the machine learning auto detection thing is because I was trying to send my friend a picture of some sand dunes that <laughs> were all very skin colored. Right. And I, I was like, I was trying to send it to him. It's like, this person doesn't want to receive this content. And I'm like, what is this? And I Google it and it's like, stop trying to send people nude photos. That's like, it's on the discord website. That's what it is. And I'm like, wait a sec. Hey, Josh, uh, send, you. send dunes. <laughs> send <laughs> dunes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to send you a, a Sphinx cat, Josh, and it was like, no. I remember that! I remember you tried to send me a Sphinx cat, yes! Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's super it's super interesting. Um, but I think that we have a long way to go before this kind of moderation is automated. And I think that even if it is automated, it shouldn't be automated. Because if it's automated, people will learn how it's automated. And then they'll get around it. Like, for example, I guarantee that if you took that same picture of that Sphinx cat, but you changed the tone and just made it look purple and sent it to me, it would probably be fine. So even human human moderators on Roblox currently ha- have issues with that. Like, for instance, a user will hide a pornographic image behind something that looks literally just like a, a picture of, like, a, a somehow a red square. Mm-hmm. They somehow, like, messed with the alphas and, the, and, and, the, and all the color channels to make it not appear, right? But then when you wear it in-game with a certain color shirt, boom... It's there. Did I ever actually, I don't know if I ever told you about my first experience with Roblox, but I was like 
12 or 13. I'm like, you know what? I've seen ads. I'll try this. I went into, I don't even know what I went into, but I went in, there was just a billboard and it was like a, it's pretty much just a, a half naked woman. And I was like, wow, I am in my living room and my parents are over there. So I'm never <laughs> oh, going to yeah. use this website again. And then I, I just closed it and I walked away, which I just so think is really funny that we're now like almost 10 years later having a conversation about the moderation of the website. So for context, that was before they, so Roblox used to be, used to trust the client and that's how that was possible. Ah. They no longer trust uh, the client. It is now client to server to client. That's good. That's that's significantly better. I think if you release anything on the internet, terrible people are going to get their hands on it. Oh, so users literally go out of their way to harass people. On, on People are just... You can plan for a lot of things, but you cannot plan for how extreme some people will go just to mess with people. Yeah, that sucks. Like, it's the worst. But, um... All right, so I think we're at about 4 p.m. Um, okay, I've got a hard cutoff, so if there's yep. any last like questions or comments or whatever, feel free to, to, to message me or put it in general, and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. But thank you all for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. Uh, uh, everybody on YouTube, thank you so much for watching, uh, and uh, we hope to see you in a further meeting.